between my junior and senior year of college, I took a summer course at Parsons School of Design. I was leaving at the end of the semester and was going to go back to, to Chapel Hill. I went to the University of North Carolina. And uh, I was trying to think, you know, what am I going to do after this? How am I going to put a portfolio together? Because this was an amazing experience and I want to be, I want to be a part of all this. This is going to date me, but back in the days of like phone booths. And I walked over to the phone booth across from my apartment at 3rd and 11th and tore out the advertising section of, of the New York City phone book and took it back with me to Chapel Hill. And when I was trying to decide um, where I was going to go back to school when I graduated to put a portfolio together, I kind of went down the list of advertising agencies in the phone book. So this is crazy that I did this, but I, but I really did it. I would cold call different agencies like BBDO New York, having no idea how gigantic that place <laughs> actually is and they would be like BBDO New York how can I help you and I wouldn't know what to say and they're like who can we put you through to and I said just anyone in the creative department <laughs> hundreds of creatives I'm sure anyone in the creative department and they're like anyone okay and then they would just connect me to someone's desk and I would say hey I'm a student at the University of North Carolina and I'm thinking of putting a portfolio together an advertising portfolio if you're gonna hire a kid right out of school would you hire someone from Parsons School Design or the Portfolio Center in Atlanta and like 99 percent of them said the Portfolio Center in Atlanta and that's where I ended up going my name is Margaret Johnson. I am the Executive Creative Director of Good Bee Silverstein and & Partners and a partner as well. Celebrating the work, lives, and achievements of women in Western North America, The Drum presents Exceptional Women Out West, hosted by The Drum North America Editor-at-Large, Doug Zanger. Let's start with three questions, shall we? Let's do it. In 2016, we should be talking about blank and why. I think the chatter at all the award shows is about advertising that makes the world a better place. Um, I think in 2016, we should be talking about products that actually make a cultural impact. So that's been my focus here at, at Goodby Silverstein. You know, you gotta walk the walk. And other people, I think, are talking the talk, but mm -hmm. if you're not doing anything, then there's no reason to have that conversation. <laughs> well, no, it's interesting because it's, it's the balance between products and good, right? And it's commerce versus life, but they can be interwoven. And you've worked on several things that have bridged the gap in very important ways. It's true, it's true. One of the things that, that we've done most recently is a project with Frito-Lay. We actually created a product uh, called Doritos Rainbows, mm -hmm. which was you know in support of the LGBT huge impact, huge social impact. Um, and for Frito-Lay, really interesting, I think, because we're taking you know, their most popular brand and actually committing to make a cultural difference. There was quite a bit of uh, feedback on both sides of the <laughs> aisle on that one. How's that for being diplomatic? Uh, lots of feedback, lots of feedback. But I have to say, you know, I really admire Rom, the CMO, for hearing this idea and getting behind it and pushing it all the way through Frito-Lay, through PepsiCo, which, you know, we don't think about it, but for a company of that size that has to reach that many people across the world, it was a big decision. Yeah. It's incredibly brave. That's cool. And there are others that you've worked on? This is more of a, a technology thing, but we created an emoji for a bully project that we collaborated with the Ad Council and lots of tech companies around here. Um, there are tech companies in San Francisco? <laughs> <laughs> there are. Uh, I think our proximity to Silicon Valley uh, definitely uh, helps in that respect. Anyway, we created this emoji that, that lives on your phone and, and if you witness any bullying happening online, and the majority of bullying is cyberbullying, in the high 90s, 90% 90 of all bullying happens, happens online. So we created this mobile tool so you can mark any bullying and call people out. And it's been, again, like really successful and made a big difference. That's cool. What's the most interesting conversation you've had recently? 
we had a creative offsite about two months ago where we took one of those boats out in the bay and, mm-hmm. and kind of cruised around for a couple of hours and and talked about our goals for the agency. And, and, and after that heavy conversation, we ended up at a karaoke bar oh, geez. On, on Market Street called The Mint. And uh, we roll into The Mint at about 3 p.m. on a Wednesday and uh, head over to the bar. <laughs> And uh, I'm thinking, no one's going to be doing karaoke at 3 p.m. on a Wednesday, and the bar was packed. And I proceeded to meet this group of people sitting at the bar, and as it turns out, these five or six people had been meeting at the Mint on Wednesdays at 3 o'clock for 30 years. Wait, what? Yeah. And it was just so fascinating to, to meet these people, and they all had their thing. There's one guy who, who only sang Pavarotti in Italian. Uh, another woman who was incredibly frightened of being on stage. She had stage fright, and so she would only do karaoke from the bar, from her bar stool. Uh, there was a heavy metal rocker dude. Mm-hmm. Uh, just this interesting, fascinating collection of people who were committed to being there on Wednesdays at 3 o'clock for 30 years. And so that conversation made me want to do a documentary about these people. That's wild. And that commitment. Um, so hopefully it'll be called The Mint. Just like the bar. Brief aside, what's your go-to karaoke song? Ooh, it's gonna, it's gonna be the, ro- the rose. It's the rose, isn't it? Ah, uh, you know, I'm a Patsy Klein kind of gal. Oh wow, well, North Carolina. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. After midnight, is that what it is? <laughs> I do, I do sorry, the, is it sorry? I'm all. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's the song I should be singing after doing this podcast. Oh my gosh, crazy. 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 Okay. What's the greatest gift that's ever been given to you? And why is that? I think my kids, mm-hmm. interestingly enough, they've made me way more uh, ruthless at work. Interesting. Um, and I think it's because, you know, I have that limited number of hours with them a day. And so it really makes me aware of the time that I have to have to get things done at work. Mm-hmm. And I make quicker decisions. I'm ruthless in that way. No time to second guess myself anymore. And it's made me a stronger leader. When you're moving that fast, what do you learn from maybe the, the, the steps along the way that maybe they're mistakes or they take you in a weird direction? What do you learn from that? I, that's the coolest part is that you're less focused on perfection and you realize that, yeah, you're going to screw up. And sometimes those screw ups end up being happy accidents and things end up being better. Or if they take a turn in another direction, that's okay too. It's just a part of life. It's part of the creative process. And so not being so focused on perfection is empowering. Let's go to the must list. What's a must do? Must do is do creative stuff on the side. The side hustle. So hit the side hustle create a documentary film, go to movies. I have a Tumblr blog called Out the Window, just stuff I see out the window of airplanes or taxi cabs or driving to work. Um, Just have an outlet outside of work that fuels your creativity. What do some of the people here at Goodby bring to you on their side hustle? Do they share their side hustle with you? Yeah, I think, and a lot of times those turn into passion projects, and that's something that we focus on a lot around here is making sure that creatives are fueling that part of them because that's really important in getting the best work out of them otherwise. What's a good side hustle you've seen from the team? Um, I talked about the the Bully Project earlier, but there were a group of people here in the agency who I think had a real passion for this project. They wanted to stop cyberbullying. It was Mm -hmm. just something that they were into and had they not been that passionate about that project I don't think it would have ever happened what's a must experience must experience for me is Sundance I go every year I think it's incredibly refreshing to see such diverse perspective Mm -hmm. in filmmaking if you just go to the movies on Friday or Saturday night all those movies are made by four or five studios so Mm -hmm. there's there's something similar to all of them And to go to Sundance and see filmmakers creating movies that, where they don't have those kind of restrictions is awesome. It's just inspiring to be surrounded by so many creatives. I think it's also amazing just to see how much work goes into making one of these films. 
it's insane. And I having mean, made it, it, a yeah. documentary myself, I know that it's, it's incredibly hard. What are some of the relationships that you built from your time at Sundance that have meant the most to you? Well, personally, I go with the same group of people every year. Mm -hmm. So there's that group that I feel very fortunate to be with, but attached to in that way. And having that creative bond is a nice byproduct of going on a, on a vacation. Mm -hmm. Meeting different filmmakers, going to after parties, like kind of discovering new editors is all part of what I do day to day. So that piece of it to me is inspiring. What's a must read? Must read Sunday, New York Times. On a tablet or like legit get the paper? Legit get the paper one day a week, only Sundays, but spend a good two hours pouring over it. Get into the New York Times magazine, read it cover to cover. Why? Uh, you know, it's just like feeling I mean, connected, I... feeling connected to the world. Also just taking that time to drink coffee and lounge and not be distracted by other things like your phone or chores or running right, errands right. or all the stuff that we all do on weekends. It's just nice to take that two hours and, and really immerse yourself in something that is incredibly interesting and keeps you up to date on what's happening in the world. I agree with you. <laughs> and get up to speed. <laughs> Realize what you've missed the right. whole week while you were doing all that other stuff. Right. What's a must learn? You got to have your go-to karaoke song. Okay, see, now I didn't realize, okay, I didn't realize that was coming, so that was serendipity. Okay. Your go-to meal that you have to, you know, that you've right. mastered. What's your go-to? Well, I'm still working on, on both of these things. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we've got Patsy Klein, crazy, and then so what's, what is this evolving meal that we can look forward to? You know, I, I, make, a, I make a mean pork tenderloin. That's, I'm pretty see, good at that. That's tough to do. I tried out last night a... Uh, spaghetti marinara that was uh, homemade. I made the sauce myself. It was amazing. Okay. Very simple, but delicious. No can openers involved? No. No. Okay. What's a question you've never been asked that you'd love someone to ask you? Can you go to Burning Man without just getting whacked out on hallucinogenics? That's a very random question. <laughs> and the answer is you can. <laughs> it can be an amazing, inspiring art experience. There's some of the coolest art I've ever seen at Burning Man. You don't think of Burning Man for that necessarily, but no. you know, you get out on your cruiser and you're on the playa and you might see like a tiny little light off in the distance and you'll ride your bike like a half mile and then you'll discover that that tiny little flickering light is actually this huge group of you know, maybe 300 people gathered around this amazing art installation, like a chandelier that's three stories tall that, you know, in theory has fallen from a building that's, you know, right. insanely large. So just that sense of discovery and, and seeing art where you least expect it is, is, a, is a cool thing. That is genuinely the question I was not expecting. <laughs> well, good. I like that. <laughs> Here's where I compliment you. Everything I've known about you and we've known each other for a while, we see each other kind of on and off. What I've always appreciated is the things that you talked about in the opening, that fearlessness. And that's not necessarily a learned behavior. That's something that I've found is naturally ingrained in people. But where productive fearlessness comes into play is when it's channeled in the right direction. Talk about your fearlessness a little bit because it's obviously something that's been with you for a very long time. Also with the projects that you worked on, you alluded to the Doritos Rainbow example. That doesn't come from a place of anything other than fearlessness, but in a very productive way. Fear can be paralyzing. I, I think for a lot of people, it's their biggest hurdle. I've always felt like fail forward. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. like perfect is boring. I tell my kids that all the time. It's like, mm -hmm. who wants to be perfect? Perfect's boring. Mm -hmm. If you live your life in a brave way, then you're going to make things happen. You're going to stumble into situations that are just more interesting, more creative, that make things happen in the world. It's a catalyst for making new things happen. Do you fear that, especially younger people, they feel that they have to be on somewhat of a linear path? Or just people in general in this industry? Because we talk a lot about fearlessness, we talk a lot about bravery, and you've alluded to the fact 
that all of these detours are important. What would you say to somebody who is trying to lead a linear path? A linear path is boring. And yes, it's always great to have goals, but you're probably not going to get there in the straight line that you have in your head. Like you're, you're probably not going to get there in a straight line you are going to make some wrong turns and meander along the way and that's the fun of it. It's just how creatives are. And mm -hmm. uh, I think you can be just as successful without worrying so much about that linear path and having a little more freedom and fun along the way. And you'll get there, you really will. You got some time now, the floor is yours. I mentioned Sundance earlier, and I, I went around and did a lot of the VR experiences that they had at Sundance that we could be a part of, and came back and realized that we're doing a project right here in-house. We actually created this idea right in our own building, and it is a virtual reality experience for the Dolly Museum. I don't know if you've seen it. Mm -hmm. But you can actually go inside of one of Dolly's paintings and, and experience it with VR. So it's a whole 360 view. You can walk through it. You can have an experience with art that no one's ever had before. It's, it's mind-blowing. And it made me realize that there's a whole nother world of VR out there that is exploding and that at least at our agency, it's something that we are on top of and really want to be more a part of. Okay, put on your advice hat here. What is your last word? What is one piece of advice that you would like to give? I think my piece of advice would be don't worry so much about gender, whether you're a guy or a girl and which gender is more successful. Just be good at what you do and you will succeed. Short, sweet, love it. Thanks so much for joining us. Really appreciate the time. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Always good to see you.